times that you've had so far, you are known to have quite a controversial approach towards clients. Is that true? Well, I see a person coming in. They come into me because they have a limitation blocking them from being who they can be. That's how I see it. Then I don't see somebody with a little brain inside their head and it's all contained in there. I see a person with infinite potential. If you like, if you want to get religious about it, I see somebody made in the image and likeness of God. And if somebody's made in the image and likeness of God, as far as I'm concerned, they are God. And they've got to bring out the God from within. And that's my approach. So it's, it's not so much controversial as I see the potential. And I'm damned if it's not coming out, because it is coming out. So people achieve potential way beyond their wildest dreams. And I don't see the mind as something inside the head. But I see the head and the body as an integral part and an expression of the mind. And if you can get the mind to express through the body, then everything is perfect. However, you've got to work with the body as well. So I'm also a Boteco practitioner that works with the breathing processes because we breathe more than we do anything else on a physical level. And if we don't do that right, then by every breath we take, we're damaging, damaging, damaging our bodies. And we end up with sleep apnea at night, end up with asthma and all these conditions. They can be all cured like that, dead easy. And I say the word cured. Anybody I know is afraid to use that word cured. It's probably banned. I don't care. I'm using it anyway, banned or not. They can be cured. Quite easily, quite efficiently. In fact, I don't cure them. They cure themselves. I show them how. Because remember, as far as I'm concerned, they're God. And they can, if God can get a person to stand up and walk on water, they can do it too. Well, they never tried walking in water. <laughs> I don't think you should go that far. <laughs> okay. That's a limitation. It might be. Okay. It might be. Try swimming. We'll that. <laughs> in that case, tell me, if that's so, your approach is different. How does your work, in terms of approach, differ from your colleagues, other people using hypnosis? Well, I don't see too many other people using hypnosis, but I do, and I have gone in the past to a lot of the seminars about what we're learning, and it reached the same old ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. I, I just stopped going because I wasn't learning anything new. And there's no point in learning the same thing again and again and again. So I started studying people like Dr. Bruce Lipton, who works with the biology of belief, and shows how biology can be influenced by thoughts and feelings and emotions, and lots of people like that. And if you read books like um, The Holographic Universe, and recognize that we are holographic and we have a holographic mind, and that everything works on a holographic principle, then this again gets rid of limitations. So it's really working from a place of without limitations and looking at and studying other areas of the magnificence of what's being discovered by the true scientists, the magnificent scientists that are alive today, like um, uh, your man Sheldrake, Dr. Bruce Lipton, uh, Michael Talbot, who wrote The Holographic Universe, people like that. And there's amazing stuff coming out. And then you incorporate that into your hypnotherapy, and then you're in a whole new place. And it's interesting and it's exciting because there can't be anything as boring as doing the same old thing day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, even if it works. When you can discover something new, something better, something more effective, something more efficient, and something that works better. And you've got to go keep on learning all the time, keep on expanding, keep doing new things, try new paths. And that's how it's different. So a lot of the processes I use, probably nobody else is using them, except I've trained you and a few people in Poland. They're using them, but apart from that, I don't know anybody else is using them. That's true. People are stuck in their usual patterns, aren't they? That's the case. They are, but there are probably other people out there doing some magnificent stuff, but I haven't met them. But they probably are. I mean, in NLP with Dr. Richard Bandler, absolutely magnificent. And then I see a lot of other, pe other people learning NLP, and... They learn it as if it's the Ten Commandments, and they learn it in a specific way, and they get right stuck into that. Well, when I learned it from Bandler, he said, no, 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 you keep on producing and keep on developing and keep on advancing and keep on evolving NLP all the time. And I took his advice from that and took it into hypnosis as well. So there are no limitations, except the limitations within the therapist. And if the therapist has limitations, I repeat again, the all they're doing is passing on the limitations to the client. And moving on a little bit from hypnotherapy itself, do you deal with stage hypnosis as well? Deal with it? I did a 
course of stage hypnosis, and part of that I did stage hypnosis on stage in, in, in a hotel in Las Vegas. And I did that because I knew that if I made a total mess of it, nobody would see me. Mm -hmm. And nobody would know about it back in Ireland, and I did that, and then when I just finished that first show that night, this girl comes up to me, she says, I know you from Dublin. And I thought, we can't go anywhere. unlucky. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it worked out all right. So I've done it a few times, and I've done it in a corporate situation, and it works out fine. But uh, I have a good friend, Barry Sinclair, whom I highly recommend to everybody to go and see him. And he does it magnificently and well. absolutely wonderfully. And Paul McKenna, I'm not sure Paul is doing it anymore, great, a great guy. And I recommend it to people because laughter is among the greatest of all healing therapeutic processes. Therefore, stage hypnosis is a healing therapeutic process. And any hypnotherapist, and there's a lot of them who put it down and deride it, they're just jealous because they can't do it. Ignorance is bliss where it's folly to be wise. Okay, and in terms of hypnotherapy, how would you compare it to other therapeutic approaches for getting people what they want in life? What other therapeutic approaches? Any other therapies that you know of, similar to hypnosis. You yeah. could mention counseling, psychotherapy, other approaches. They're not psychology. similar to hypnosis. When you're using hypnosis, and to an extent NLP as well. You're talking and communicating directly with the subconscious mind. When you're using any of those therapies, you're talking to the conscious mind to affect change at the subconscious level. That's about as effective as polishing your car to charge your battery. It doesn't work. So if you really want to affect change in your body, if you want to stop smoking, you go to a good hypnotherapist. I can stop you smoking in one hour. You can stop a person smoking in one hour. I'm quite happy to give them a guarantee to the effect. So are you, and a good hypnotherapist will. I don't know any psychologist, any psychotherapist, any psychoanalyst, any psychobabalist who can do that. And if they can't do that, I think that's the art stick. Okay. You've been working with hypnosis for many years, mostly on your own. And mm -hmm. now we've been working together for quite a while. How, what's it like? to work with somebody else, to be a mentor? In the beginning, you're wondering if this person has an open, sufficiently open mind. And once you discover they have, then it's fantastic because now you can pass on this information to another person. You can see them doing it effectively. And you know that it isn't just some kind of a quirk of your own, some sort of a gift or something like that, that it can be duplicated and it can be done by others. And this is absolutely magnificent. And I've done it with you first, and then we've done it with the training class in Poland. And some of them are doing magnificent now, the ones that are actually doing it. And they're achieving great things. Uh, and this is magnificent. And this is the most... It's, it must be like parents having their first baby or something like that. They must be totally overjoyed because it's an overjoying experience to see that you can pass it on and that others can do it and to see that you make sure that their mind stays open to every potential and to recognize that the mind isn't a piece of three and a half pounds of, of, of wet tissue inside their head. It's not. It's much more than that. <laughs> Good comparison. Mm. Okay, and would you recommend recall hypnosis to your clients, to people you know? as a representative as working with Total Mind Dynamics? Yeah, of course, absolutely, without any question whatsoever. Because they're going to go to somebody who has an open mind, who sees the potential, they sit in the seat, that person sees a God in the seat, with all the potential of the God, and it's got to bring out that from within the person. Because the only limitations that person has are the ones they brought in through their door, and the hypnotist per job in this instance, as in your case, is to take away those limitations and let them go out the door without the limitations. And then you have a person who's in a far better state of mind and body, without the limitations. That this world, you see, they say, oh, people are afraid of hypnosis. It's a kind of a crazy statement when you think that the people who are afraid of hypnosis are in a state of hypnosis. They're in a negative trance, for God's sake, and they're so deeply into it, they're afraid of the positive hypnosis. So it's a joke, really. They pick up the hypnosis media rubbish that's going on from the media, from, you know, the, the populace around them, and they pick up the, the fear part of it, and they don't pick up the positive part of it, they, they're focused in on one specific part of it. And there's really nothing to fear but fear itself, and fear can be got rid of. 
And it's a sad thing, fear, because fear is the ultimate prison. And the absence of fear is the ultimate freedom. I couldn't agree more. Mm. And our job is to get rid of the fear. That's true. Well, I think that's all. I think we know everything now. Would you like to comment anything else? Well, one thing people say to me, is there anything to be afraid of hypnosis? And I say, yes, there is. Be very afraid. Be terribly afraid of not using hypnosis in your life. Because you live in a world of limitation if you don't open your mind to hypnosis that in turn opens your mind to your true potential and opens you up to your subconscious mind and to your higher consciousness and to universal consciousness and to unlimited potential. So be terrified if you don't use hypnosis. Because you're in prison, the prison of ignorance. Nobody wants to be there, do they? I doubt. Although you could still think there are such people. People who are afraid, who don't want to come. Well, don't they don't have to come. I'm not going out with a gun to invite anybody in. There's plenty of people. I have more than enough people coming to see me all the time. And I'm happy with that. And you remember one other little thing about hypnosis. It's a contract between two people to achieve a common desired outcome. And if somebody comes in that doesn't want to be there, there's not going to be any contract. So you're not going to get any results with them. So you don't want those people coming through the door. You want people who are prepared to have an open mind and work with you and honor their part of the contract. Because I give 100% of all I've got, you give 100% of all that you've got, and if the client only gives 99%, they might as well not give any percent. Because there's got to be 100% from both sides, and then the result will always be 100%. So can you guarantee you'll get a 100% result? You can give them a guarantee that if they do their part 100%, and you do your part 100%, then there will be 100% result. But the trouble is you can never guarantee their half. It would be wonderful if you could. Now, I give up guarantee for smoking, but I take that responsibility, so if they have to come back again, I'll give them the sessions for free. And if they come back ten times, I don't care, I'll give them the sessions for free after that. Because I want to be sure that they will be successful and have a higher, su a higher success rate than anybody I know on the planet anywhere. So, it's a contract between two people to achieve a common outcome. And if they're both in the same pattern for that, and if they both want to achieve the same common outcome, there's no reason in the world with competent hypnotists like you or like I am that they won't achieve it. They will. So that's the magic of hypnosis. And that's a fact. That's for sure. Thank you very much for the interview, Tom. You're very welcome. Enjoy your career. Thank you.